so the best place to find Joshua's in the park is right up here at Split Rock. And the trail leads over here. We'll head out here to the trailhead parking lot. So our Joshua tree here, in fact, is not a tree at all. It is a yucca, and it comes from the family of plants called agaves. Much like this plant here, which is a Mojave yucca, or a yucca shadigara, and the scientific name of our Joshua tree is yucca revifolia. So our Joshua, it can grow as tall as 40 to 50 feet high. It can live about 100 and 200 years old, sometimes even up to 1,000 years old. And the base of the trunk on the largest Joshua's can be as much as four feet in diameter, but they don't go very far underground. This guy might go about 12 inches underground and then just stop and be supported by a whole series of roots and rhizomes. Here we have one that's uprooted and you see there's really nothing holding it down in the ground, right? So this is the uh, layer where he's underground. And if you're lucky, you might get, I don't know, 12 inches, 18 inches before it branches out with roots here, okay? Our rhizomes, there's a root here. So it's really not a lot holding these guys up. And he fell down, but his segments will reroot and grow. So he's not a tree, he's a yucca. He's made of fibers instead of our traditional tree-like structures. And I'll show you what I mean here. So here we have a fallen Joshua, and I'll kind of tell you how this is different than our traditional tree. So Joshua is made of fibers, like we have here, throughout the whole plant. In a cross section, you can see the fibers, and intertwined in the fibers are the vascular system of the plant called the xylem and the phloem. A traditional tree has separate xylem and phloem, and as the traditional tree ages, that vascular system will fill in with different deposits, harden, and kind of make our circular rings to help age and date a hardwood tree. But a Joshua, it's all fibers, and we have no rings. So you cannot date these guys, traditionally speaking, like you would a hardwood tree. All right? So when you see a plant like this, heck, it might be five years old. Over here, it might be 20, 30. This one might be 100 years old. But you can't really tell how old these trees are because their growth is really determined by the soil conditions and the amount of water they get. Here's another example of a cross section of what it looks like inside. Okay, we have these fibers, it's all fibrous. There's no rings here to tell how old it is. Okay. So when you see a standalone Joshua like we have here, without any segments, it simply means it hasn't flowered yet. What's happening, take a look at the base here. As this grows from a seed or a segment that's fallen from another tree, it has a terminal bud, they will steer this plant upward. It's very fibrous, so it's very flexible. And the terminal bud will help guide it left or right to keep it balanced. And the terminal bud is also accompanied by other buds on the sides, which don't propagate until a certain effect occurs. And what's happening, we'll take a look over here. We have proteins or hormones in the plant that prevent the little side buds from germinating into flowers. But when the plant gets a certain height, gravity will pull down those hormones, the terminal bud will actually die, and the side buds will then be allowed to propagate into flowers, like we have here. And then those flowers will then create new segments, and those new segments will have a terminal bud, which will then die, and more offshoots 
from other side buds will branch out into more flowers and more segments. And over time, you kind of get a mishmash of branches coming left and right. They're usually in twos, as you can see. Sometimes they're single, and sometimes you might even find them in threes. And that's how this plant grows up to their 40 or 50 feet height. So here's another really tall one. You notice how he's branching out a lot to the right. All right, for some reason, maybe this one didn't branch out well enough. But you notice how they always tend to grow upward because that terminal bud on each of the branches steers the growth of each segment. And here is a little messier. And perhaps he's getting a little too heavy for himself and he starts to droop. And of course, eventually the branches or the segments will fall off. But up at top, you see how they're steering upward as that terminal bud just moves that fiber around. Now our Joshua also goes by the names of yucca palm, tree yucca, palm tree yucca, and even sometimes a yucca tree. In Spanish, it's called an isote de desierto, which means desert dagger, and that refers to these very sharp pointed leaves we find on this plant. Now the world mostly knows this plant from U2's Joshua Tree album cover, but sadly, somebody actually cut down the real tree a few years ago. Anyway, this iconic plant is found only in the Mojave Desert of California, Arizona, and Nevada, and some small portions of Southern Utah, and some parts of Mexico as well. So the leaves of our Joshua, they're clustered in rosettes at the ends of the branches. They're usually about one to five feet long and about one to two feet in diameter. And the leaves are linear here, and they're thin. They're needle-shaped, and they come to this point, which is, of course, why we call them a dagger. And the leaf margins are even lined with really small teeth. See that right there? So if you rub against it, it kind of cuts you like a little saw. Okay? And the flowers here, the flowers occur in dense, heavy panicles, about 8 to 20 inches long. And this thing can weigh up to 10 pounds. It's a small one. This is last year's growth. We don't have any this year's growth yet, but you kind of get the idea. In individual flowers, they're roundish here to egg-shaped, all right? And a fruit develops at the base of the flower cluster up here. And they're very secure and they're hard to detach. And that's a secret of how this Joshua branches out to create more branches like we have up here. This guy here is a little shorter Super multi-branched. He's got last year's flowers hanging on. See how he's all branched out here, all in twos. And down here, it's all been shaven dry by the animals picking off the fibrous bark. Now he may get top heavy and fall over, create a whole new bunch of plants. Look at those flowers here. So our Joshua propagates really by three different ways, okay? First of all, if you do get a seed or a pod that comes off here, which is very rare, it might drop and grow as a plant. Another way is at the base of the plant, we have rhizomes that will come out of the ground here, about six inches underground, sprout up to a new plant. But the most common way is that this segment will simply fall off on the ground and start to grow on its own like the standalone guy here. Okay? And the flowers 
they're pollinated by what's called a yucca moth. And she's the only animal in the desert who does this with our Joshua's. Now when her young ones hatch, they dine on the Joshua's eggs. So it's a perfect example is symbiosis. So on this Joshua, notice up here how the branch has cracked, got too heavy. It's fallen to the ground, all right? And it started to create some new plants here. Because what's happened is it's rerooted down below. I Man, I can't even lift it up because it's rerooted here. We're going to get three new plants, at least two, one here and one here, out of this guy. Now, another cool fact about this plant is that the Joshua's in the western Mojave Desert actually grow taller than the Joshua's in the eastern part of the desert. So ours here, you see they're a lot longer, more truncated, spread out, and overall a lot taller and healthier looking. And the ones in the eastern Mojave, they're shorter, they're more bunched together, they're not as tall, of course. So the animals love our Joshua. They like to use the fibers for nests. But up here, see how it's all bare? Right here, this is where some birds may have been perching, like a screech owl or a great horned owl. And they camouflage fantastically inside this tree. So at Joshua Tree National Park up at Queen Valley Mine, we have this huge forest here, Joshua trees. Some are older, some are newer, like this guy here, never flowered yet, or just flowering on top. So how did this plant get the name Joshua Tree? Well, it seems that everybody in the world believes it got the name Joshua Tree from the Mormons. And legend has it that Joshua stretched out his arms, holding a spear to help the Israelites conquer Canaan. In the biblical Joshua, he led his army the same way the Joshua Tree guided the Mormons across the deserts. So others refer to the Joshua tree simply as Joshua raising his arms up in prayer. But that's really myth and legend. In the late 1800s, the Mormons never called this plant a Joshua tree. In fact, they always referred to it by its scientific name, the Yucca brevifolia. They might have used some other names like the Yucca palm. They even didn't call it a Joshua when they were trekking across the deserts and Death Valley. So there's some references perhaps to the name Joshua in the early 1900s. It wasn't until Maureen Whipple wrote the novel The Giant Joshua in 1941 where the term Joshua tree really took off. And the novel takes place in 1861 in the city of St. George, Utah, where the Mormons would have their first encounter with the Joshua on their journey south and upon encountering the new barren, dangerous lands of the desert. But looking at the cover, looks like a giant Joshua tree. So the name stuck and used forevermore, especially by people who have never even seen a Joshua tree and never been to the Mojave Desert. Well, that's the story of our wonderful Joshua tree up here in Joshua Tree National Park. All right. Well, I hope you liked that video. Thanks for watching. Bye.